Howdy, folks! How are y'all doing? My name is Risa, and welcome back to our glorious adventures in Tekken 2, where today we are continuing our adventure with Spurious, who says, Hello, Reese Crafts. I have one final request for you, if you have the time. <laughs> Speaking of time, we've heard rumors about a watch that can do more than just tell the time. It can, as the legends go, control time itself! Have you heard of such a thing? Uh, yes, and I can bring it to you. Yes, but I will not make it for you. And no, I have not heard of such a thing. So, they're giving us a pretty good list of options here. Uh, we can either play dumb or we can be honest and say, yeah, I know what the watch for flowing time is. But I'm not giving it to you. Because I have no idea what you're going to do with it, Spurious. You weird, curious creature. Oh, Spurious, curious. That's probably just a coincidence. I doubt there's anything to that. I will not make it for you. Uh, that is a shame. If you change your mind, please come and speak with me. I assure you, we will make it worth your while. I thought they were going to say worth your time, and that would have been that would have been quite funny. So he wants a watch of flowing time, which could have been pulled up just then because I had Project E pulled up anyway. But the watch flowing time is a pretty interesting little beast, and honestly, it's best used on a pedestal. But uh, right click to change mode. Con time control mode is off. I'm pretty sure you can speed up time, maybe slow it down, maybe even reverse it if I'm not mistaken. You could do some interesting things here with the Watch of Flowing Time, but on the pedestal, it gives bonus ticks to nearby blocks every tick. So each tick, nearby mobs move 0.1 times the speed. Don't know what that means. Maybe it slows them down? That could possibly be what it means. But mostly this is used to speed up your contraptions and make them faster. But here be spiders. Because if you put this near certain machines, like let's say underground, uh, in, I mean, not even really that far underground, let's just say slightly below sea level, you have a factory that is constantly churning out something along the lines of a fully automated medium voltage solar array system. So, you know, let's say you have one of those, and it's spitting out, you got 69 of the darn things sitting over here, and you start setting those up, there's potential, there's potential that your machines could get wrecked. They're not going to blow up, but because it alters the speed, the tick rate, it has the potential to cause power not to be delivered correctly, so your machines stall, or sometimes uh, production halts, and it gets stuttery and jittery, and you kind of just have to play around with it. It's hard to know, as soon as you place it down definitively one way or the other, whether or not it's going to work properly. You kind of you just have to try and be ready to be disappointed if it breaks everything, because that it do happen from time to time. But it's great with farms. You can stack them so you can have more than one. So you can have like 10 watches of flowing time and 10 pedestals, and it builds on top of each itself. It's crazy, the things you can do with the watch of flowing time. And I want to build one anyway, but I have decided yet if we're going to build one for him. Before we do anything, though, we have a couple of alchemical bags that we carry around with us. So we have this one that's got all of our tools and some other handy knickknacks. We've got this one here that just has a scoop. That's all it's got. But I got a comment from, I believe it was Maria Amor, who said that if we just rebuild the alchemical bag, the white one, Apparently, it remembers what was in it, right? Because if you have multiple white alchemical bags, apparently it's like bound to your character and it'll just know, oh, the last time you were holding one of these, it had these items in it. I, I don't know if I believe that. It seems too good to be true, but wool, uh, alchemical, high covalence dust, it's all pretty simple stuff. So, is that Minecraft music? I don't know if you can even hear that. I just heard it in my like, left ear cup. Oh yeah, Minecraft music's kicking in. Normally I turn that off, but I'll tell you what, I don't mind it. This isn't a series where I add my own music, unlike some other series, one of which is, is in production as we speak. But I'll tell you what, I mean, Minecraft music, it has its place. I don't mind it. It makes It's probably going to be so quiet you won't even hear it. And if you do, it'll just be like a subtle little... All right, so here's the moment we find out whether or not this white alchemical bag has all of our stuff in it. Oh my gosh, it does! We still have our nano saber. We still have our precision wrench. We still have all of our goodies. This is amazing. It also means that we're going to get rid of this one because we don't need a separate bag just for a scoop. That's ridiculous. Maria Amor. Maria, you are you you are the a channel member of the week, which is not a real thing, but it is now. Thank you for that tip. Maria Moore also left us another helpful comment, stating that the reason the arrows are going 
whiff in your base is the project E torches around your base. That's true. So we've seen the interdiction torches cause arrows from skeletons not to hit us. So it makes sense that it would also get weird with these torches from our Archangel Smite. So that kind of explains why they're not going head on. They're just, I thought they were just doubling back and going after me because I was the only like closest living thing. But no, it's the interdiction torches, which actually makes a ton of sense. And if we wanted to, we could just go test that outside. So if we just grab ourselves a nice torch and plop that down. Let's get away from any place we know there's an interdiction torch. So like right here, for example. And we fire right on top of this thing. Yeah, it's going to get repelled back at me. And if we stand right on top of it, Oh, I kind of expected to get, like, thrown up into the air. The point is, it's not going anywhere near that torch. And I reckon if we fly... Oh my gosh! If we fly... This thing has, like, a really long range, doesn't it? Wow. Yeah. Okay, now I'm confused. There we go. Okay, I finally got far enough away that it, it must do the calculation early or something? It's hard to say, but I mean, if I just rapid fire them, which we can do, you can see them flying off in all kinds of crazy directions now. Anywhere but at the torch, which is very funny. I'm going to leave this torch here now. How did that get there? How, wh what is this and where did it come from? Why is this like this? I'm so confused about this place. I feel like this is my fault, but I don't remember. Oh, I had a, I had a something that flew, that threw a lava around is what I had there. And this is where I died. But that's okay. The death hurts a little bit less now that we know that this is here. So bless. Next, we are going to build the Watch of Flowing Time. Maybe? Or maybe we're going to keep putting it off? Because I don't know. Maybe I need to let you folks have a voice. Maybe I need to let you folks decide. Do we, do we build the Watch of Flowing Time for Spurious? I mean, when you consider everything else we've already done for Spurious, we've given him all manner of multiple rings. Why do I have two Swift Wolf Rending Gales? Wait a minute, what? Why do I have two of these? Did... I... I am confused. Wait. Is something broken? <laughs> Did something get broken? <laughs> Wait, why are there two of these? Wait! What? <laughs> I'm so confused. I also don't care enough to think about... I probably just looked back at previous footage, and there was a rational and reasonable explanation for why... Oh, did I make it so I could test it in a pedestal, and it shoots arrows or lightning or something? Maybe that's a possibility. I don't know. What I do know is that I don't really want to walk around with all of these tools. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first upgrade them to the Red Matter tool set. So that's just adding dark matter and red matter. And of course, we have essentially endless matter. We just have a look inside of here. And of course, there's the machine in the basement that we know is to this day continuing to just churn out buckets of matter without any intervention from us. And we can go down there anytime we need to and get them. So matter is not something we're hurting for. So we're just going to grab a stack of red matter. Going to get ourselves a stack of the dark matter. And that ought to be good enough to be getting on with. So we're going to upgrade from the dark matter pickaxe to the red matter. And I mean, what you're basically accomplishing here with these updates, just making them a little bit faster, a little bit more powerful. I don't know if it actually improves their usability at all. Like, you know how with the, the hammer, you can dig a five by five space. Well, with the red matter hammer, can you dig a bigger space? Don't know. I'll be honest with you. I don't care. I don't even know if I'm going to go test it. Well, no, we're going to go test it. Because what kind uh, is this thing safe? What an achieve. Oh my gosh. It's getting out of hand down here. we got to find somewhere else for all of these wonderful channel member crabs to live. Uh, what I was trying to say is... No, I don't remember what I was trying to say. Was it about being a bad YouTuber who doesn't do their due diligence in the preparation for making these videos and just goes in all willy-nilly and, and just tries their best. If I right-click with this thing, what happens? It looks uh, like it's possibly bigger. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm going to say it is. That's what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven by four? Yeah, no, that's bigger. And I'm assuming that's probably what we can expect from everything. More powerful sword, probably faster digging pickaxe, bigger, bigger hoeing area. All that's really cool, but this is a large number of tools, I think we can all agree, to carry around with us, to the point where it's a little bit silly. Can I not open this? <laughs> 
I don't know about keeping this ring on my person at all times. It's starting to get a little bit pesky. <laughs> if I'm going to be honest with you, constantly shooting off arrows is getting a little bit annoying. But more annoying than that is, like, look at the sheer volume of tools. If I want to do everything all of the time, I've got to have seven tools on me. Because that's four, five, six, seven. Or do I? Well, there's a couple of tools we can build. One is the red guitar. Or probably even, you know, yeah, guitar. And then the Red Morning Star. As you can see, each of these takes uh, three or more tools. And I say three or more, it's three or four. Combines them together to get a super tool that does all of the things that the tool does individually. So naturally, we're going to go ahead and build that. And instead of taking up all of that inventory space, look at this. It only takes up two spaces. And I've got my super sword. And if you ever forget which one does which, you can just like hover over it and look at the recipe. Ah, this shears, it axes, it swords, it hoes, it does it all. And then this one here, your red morning star, is really your sort of ja uh, jack of all digging trades. It's going to be your shovel. It's going to be your pick. It's going to be your hammer. It's going to be your best friend when you're down in the mines, just trying to collect some goods. So I feel like nighttime is probably the best time of the day to go out and test this thing. And I reckon we'll probably test it again way over here in the sort of No Man's Forest, which is the sequel to No Man's Sky that I think is really going to change the way we view video games. I mean, first things first, how does this work as a weapon? We'll never know because the creeper blew up before I could get close enough to it. Come here, you. So, I mean, a one shot of a skeleton is pretty impressive. But what about a skeleton in leggings? Absolutely decimated. What about this guy? Actually, I probably shouldn't attack this guy now that I think about it. I think, did I kill him? Did I get him with two hits? Or is he going to come back? He's probably friends. Nope, yep, he's alive. Takes a couple more than two hits. Probably friends with those guys. Probably just over here scouting. But do you know what? Not their territory. This is no man's land. Anything can happen out here. I have now established that as the official position of the Howdy Folks Nation. Anything can happen in no man's land, so I guess I can't be too shocked or surprised if anything happens to me in no man's land. Also, what separates me from... Oh. Oh, wait, no, this is directly attached. Wait, really? D do I... Do I own this property? I'm kind of confused on how it works. Because I thought that there was a separation there for some reason. I thought this was like an island. I don't know why I thought that. If we have a look at the map... Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Okay. No, yeah. All of this is connected. So I am on an island. It's just a much bigger island than I had realized. I kind of thought it was just this piece here. It does not connect up to this, though. So this is free real estate, technically. And it doesn't connect up to here, here, or here. Lots of islands around here. Lots of... Ter I'm not really sure about how the territory works. Uh, everyone's is kind of equally sized, though. Mine might arguably be larger. Should I go ahead and, like, claim this before something weird starts happening? How do I claim it? What What do I... <laughs> how would I go about doing that? Wait a minute, let me get some marble? And maybe some lamps? I use lamps. I, I feel like that would be expected of me. If you see a... I, I've not seen anyone else using... Has anyone else been using lamps? They've been using lamps. They have lamps all the way around. Okay, all right. Well, I mean, surely the white lamps. We've not seen anyone else use those. So if I just take some, like, marble and some white lamps, and I just go down here, and I start setting up beacons, right, on the corner. Say, one, two, three, lamp. And then just do that every so often. Is that sort of... Uh, ooh, th this could be risky. Because on the one hand, this could be me claiming my territory and just saying, don't come over here. But it could also be, like, in the hit Disney motion picture... Mulan, the animated one, not the live-action one, because no one liked that because of its ties to communist China and the fact that it also just wasn't a good movie. Uh, when we're gonna remember in that movie when the Huns show up? This is before they got down to business to defeat the Huns. This is like at the beginning of the movie when they when he's like, "I'm here because you built that wall," and that was your way of saying, "Come on over here, Huns, let's do a war." And they were like, no, this is just our wall. This is too late now. You built the wall. Here come the Huns. That's pretty much the exact dialogue. I've not seen the movie in maybe over a decade now, but I'm pretty sure it's at least close enough to that that I can say definitively with certainty. So much so that I would, I would actually, if this were Jeopardy, I would bet all of my money on that being correct. I'm pretty sure that's what he says, and that's, that's what starts the war. And the point I'm trying to get at with my misremembering of this film... Hey, can we just, like, turn this on and everyone leaves me alone? Yeah, perfect. 
the point I'm trying to getting at is like, what if someone sees this and they see this as like an act of aggression? Maybe someone was already scoping this land out. Well, if that's the case, then I don't want them to build near my base. I don't want them to see this as an act of aggression either, though. I don't want, say, the Endermen or the Pig people to look at me putting down these little lamps and say, well, clearly this is a massive territorial grab, and we need to initiate all-out war against this individual. I don't want that. I, do I don't know if I'm ready for a war. There's a weapons mod that we've not even looked into yet. I mean, sure, I've got red matter armor now. And I've got some really great weapons. But wh what good is that going to do me in a war where there's thousands and thousands of potential enemies coming after me? What's going to happen then? I'm just going to get... I'm, I'm going to... You know what it is? It's like a war of attrition, kind of. Except they're not like starving me out or waiting for me to run out of supplies. They're just going to keep slapping me until eventually my armor wears down. We know we're vulnerable. We know we can apparently get God. All, all, all I have to do is accidentally leave the computer running and go about my normal day-to-day -day life. And when I log back in, I'll be dead. And then what? Then what happens after that? Well, they'll have claimed the territory back. But at this point, I've, I've now like presented to you my reasoning for why I feel like this is probably a bad idea and why I think that this is, this is definitely going to get us in trouble. And I've done so while actively following through on it anyway. I pretty much said this is why we shouldn't do it while I'm in the middle of like launching the rocket. You know what I'm saying? Or, or, or like another example is, yeah, we probably shouldn't change the price on this Netflix subscription because everyone's going to be really upset and cancel their subscriptions. But I've already typed out the email while saying that we shouldn't do this. And I've hit send and I've also disabled the ability for people to share passwords. So, yeah, I don't know, man. I guess if everyone closes their accounts, that's on us now. Lol. There it is. I've staked my territory. This I don't know what to do with this land now that we've claimed it. This takes me back, though, to when I had my Tech at Classic series on a server. And pretty close to spawn... Land was being taken up rapidly, and I went ahead and I claimed a large area using, I think, World Edit or World Guard or something like that, whatever was the popular bucket plugin at the time. I claimed a massive territory, and I said, this is where I'm going to do, because I, I had a series, and I needed room to do all the things in the series. And I said, look, I'm just going to go ahead and claim this space here. And one of them, someone on the server started a protest over it, even though... It's not like they had been set up in that territory. No one was in that territory. That's why I went ahead and claimed it. But they're like, this is unfair. You've taken too much land. And I destroyed their protest, kicked them out of the territory, and threatened to ban them from the server because they didn't have the patience for their nonsense. You might say, geez, that seems harsh. It's a Minecraft world. It's infinite. Go somewhere else. It's not like I was taking up all the good real estate immediately around spawn. No, there was, it was like to the, if I remember correctly, it was to the east of spawn quite a ways and then the very edge of my territory butted up against spawn and then the rest of the world was free just go somewhere else don't don't protest the server owner claiming their own oh, it's ridiculous that individual was very annoying though that was the same individual that blatantly ignored me every time i said they're the reason we had world guard because they kept showing up when I was trying to record. Be like, I, I want to help you in the video. I'm like, no, I told you no. I, you, I told you no. I'm like, okay, but I want to help. Here's some red matter. I'm like, I don't want your red matter. Get out of my house. Stop coming over here. Okay, but I want to help. So I'm going to make you some red matter. It, it was, they couldn't get through to them. There's a reason we don't do servers anymore. <laughs> World Guard, though, very handy. Very useful. Don't know if it still exists. All of that was really just kind of delaying the point, wasn't it? Trying to determine whether or not... <sighs> I'm still not sure. I'm still not sure. What if we built gem armor? Because the thing with gem armor is it's sort of like all of the rings. Well, not all of them, but some of them. I'm pretty sure it's like some of them. Look, you can have a helmet that's got night vision. That's crazy. And then also, maybe... Become the master of time. Right-click to change mode. Yeah, I don't know if you can actually, like, use these things in... in. I know you can fly. I know that's a thing. If you make the gym boots, you can fly. And then I'm pretty sure... Maybe you're invincible. Should I just look up the gym armor real fast? Should I just go ahead and do that? Let's see. Gem armor. If I just type that in there, what are the odds it's going to take me to something useful? Okay. Well, this is unfortunate. 
because it's taken me to the Technic pack, which is so old. Not the not the web not the Technic pack website, mind you. No, no, no. The actual Technic pack that predates the original Tekkit. I don't know if any of this is actually well. Hold on. You know what? I doubt it's changed that much. Project E is a faithful recreation. It's probably accurate. So, Jim Helmet. Breathe in water and press R to make lightning strikes wherever you are looking. Does that make sense? That doesn't even have the right... Doesn't even have the right... That, that can't be right. I feel like that's not accurate anymore. But okay. I mean, this also mentions the night vision, though. So, like, clearly this is outdated. Uh, we got the, the chest plate. It says here that in immunity to fire and lava and press C to cause an explosion around you. I can see that. I, I can see that being what that does. Okay, and then the leggings. What have we got there for the leggings? Active, uh, hold shift while free falling to increase speed. That's fun. Hold shift while not free falling to slow down or repel mobs in a five block radius. Possibly. Possibly. Is that what the watch of slowing time is for and then finally we've got the hurricane boots which they're not called that anymore but immunity to fall damage while not sprinting why why while not sprinting always sprint on the ground hold space to quickly ascend see <laughs> this is deeply deeply outdated let's hit up maybe the ftb wiki gym armor this maybe could be possibly more updated Okay. I mean, it's kind of got the same information and doesn't really mention, yeah, any of the useful... We might just have to build it. Why are all of the wikis outdated? Why are all of the wikis outdated and why do none of them have any useful information? This is very frustrating. <sighs> this is going to necessitate that we build the Watch of Flowing Time in order to build the pants. And I'm probably going to want to build like three of them. So I can have one to turn in for the quest if we decide to do that. One to use on a pedestal for experimentation. And then one to use in the crafting of the armor. So we're going to need dark uh, obsidian, dark matter, a clock, which... Heck, have we built one of those? I don't use them in the game normally because I find them to be largely useless. It wouldn't... Oh, good, Minecraft music is back. It's just it's just gold and redstone. Uh, it's just weird to me. I, I never build these. I don't I don't really use them. So let's see. We'll just build the one. And then we can make as many... Like, they're so... First off, I'm still not really good at understanding what it means. Does that mean that it's almost noon? Is that... Like, when it's completely... When the sun is completely flat across it, does that mean that it is noon? Maybe. Maybe this is the moment. Maybe today is the day I finally understand how the clock in Minecraft works. Maybe we stand here for 40 minutes and watch the whole day-night cycle twice. Maybe we don't do that, because that's ridiculous and wouldn't make for highly entertaining content, which is what we're generally going for around here. 64 clocks ought to be enough to be getting on with. A bit of dark matter, but not in block form. And some obsidian, but in block form. And then finally, some glowstone, which we always need. And then we can use that to create the Watch of Flowing Time. And then we can use that to create the Watch of Flowing Time. And then one more time, we can create a Watch of Flowing Time. And we'll go ahead and just get rid of the rest of this stuff and grab a pedestal. And we'll, we'll just go outside and play with the Watch of Flowing Time for now. And we'll kind of just, we'll just kind of see how we feel about this. Oh, while I'm in here, though, we do need a number of Klein Stars. We're going to need one for each piece of armor. Does that mean it holds its own EMC? I guess it, well, I guess all these things technically hold the amount of EMC they're using at any given time, I don't know. How do we demonstrate how this works without destroying anything? What's the easy... You know what? Probably the easiest thing to do is going to be to just plant a couple of things. So, there we go. We just right-click there with our katana. Sorry, katar. Very different. We'll grab some seeds of some variety. Maybe a beetroot. <laughs> These are really the only types of seeds I have. A beetroot and a couple of... Uh, a couple of wheats. Click that down, click that onto it, right click to activate it. This is a this is a thrilling demonstration so far, gotta say. Oh, by the way, this can be used if you build a 
EMC generator, like the one we have in the basement, it can absolutely be used to accelerate that. And again, the more the merrier, right? I just be careful whatever you're using to pipe items around can keep up. This is the worst demonstration ever. I almost wonder if it would be faster if it was just in my inventory and I activated it. Oh, time control mode set to fast forward. See how fast the sun is going through the sky. Man, it's a shame we didn't hold on to one of those clocks because then we would actually be able to physically watch it spin across. Like, look at this. Yeah, okay, that's not really all that thrilling, is it? Click it again! It's rewinding! The sun is coming back! <laughs> watch it tick back on the clock! This is actually a really cool one to have if you want to have, say, daytime all of the time. Because I'm pretty sure the next one is pause. I might be wrong on that, though. Oh, no, it's just off. So it's fast forward, rewind, or off. What about putting it on the pedestal? Does that freeze time? I actually can't tell. Is the sun moving? <laughs> If I, like, put the reticle right on the tip of the sun, is it going to move away from it? No, okay, yeah, so that doesn't freeze time. That's good to know. But it doesn't seem to speed things up either. Come here, you. Are you broken? You're not really making these plants grow any faster. Gives two bonus ticks to nearby blocks every tick. That makes it sound like it's going to speed things up times three, right? Possibly? I'm taking it back. We're not doing this. This is this is taking a long time. We need to find a better demonstration. Maybe we we maybe we, we I mean you know what? It, normally it doesn't work with machines, but let's have a look at this machine here and see what happens. Okay, so you kind of see the speed at which this is going. You kind of see the speed at which this is going. If I plop this down here and I turn it on, and I think its area of effect is rather tight. I think it's only maybe three blocks out from the center, but I could be wrong. Oh, wow! Okay, it's working! So as you can see, it's having a profound effect on the rotary macerator. So much so that it maybe broke this? Doesn't look like it broke this. In fact, it looks... No, actually, it kind of looks like it broke it more than it was already broken, but in a positive way? So you can see, if we look over here now... Theoretically, this is... Yeah, this is, looks like it's going a bit faster to me. I might be wrong. But it looks like it's... I mean, we could just test by turning it off. And then we'll see this goes back to normal. And then we see this kind of goes back to normal. And then if we just turn this back on, it's kind of not normal again. It's kind of broken in a little bit. And then you know what? Let's say we got real silly with it. Let's say we came over here and we grabbed two more pedestals. And we grabbed the other two watches of flowing time that we got. And then we got real silly. And we just plopped these down like so. Stuck the watches on there. Activated them all. As you can see here, we're now moving very fast. And as you can see here, we're now moving very fast. The concern I would have is power delivery. So how are we doing down here? On the Oh, the MFE is actually holding. So that's interesting. In the past, when I've tried to use these to accelerate machines, it's broken them. Profoundly broken them. But this is just sort of working. And this is sort of staying broken. And this is still kind of ticking up. Yeah? Interesting. I mean, what would the effect of this then be? I mean, we might as well leave that one running. I don't care. But if we, like, brought this down there to the assembly line... Could we, would we, should we? And what could possibly go wrong? I mean, how is it going to in interact with things like the transportation pipes? See, there's a lot of unknowns here. There's a lot of variables that I'm unsure of at this present moment. But if we just come down here and we have a look, say, here, this is one we're always running out of, right? We're always running out of rubber. If I just plop this down, plop this down, turn this sucker on, it's producing a lot more rubber. It is definitely producing a lot more rubber. It's producing it faster, apparently, than we can keep it stocked. But it looks like, no, actually, stock is currently maintaining. It's, it's actually picking back up again, so that's just a result of... It's sending more rubber along now than it was before. I'm sorry, it's sending along <laughs> a lot more sticky resin than it was before. Every so often I just come up here and make sure that it is actually producing sticky resin. Because sometimes I remember that time I didn't hook all of that up properly. So how are we doing on the... I mean, will we ever reach a point where we have an excess of sticky resin? Probably not. Because remember, that's going to two different places. So first off, it's going to right here where it's making the copper cables. And that's full. But then it's also going down here to where it's making the gold cables. 
And the gold cables is also full. No, it's not. It's filling up, though. Interesting. Interesting. But what, but I mean, what negative effects could this be having? It could theoretically also be speeding this up. Again, it has a tight area of effect, but it looks like it could very well be speeding this up, too. I think maybe. I mean, I guess we could just turn it off and we could check. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's normal speed. That is faster. What? I'm just expecting something to go wrong. I'm anticipating any minute now that there's going to be a disaster and I'm going to have to like face it. But power's holding. Power's holding. Everything seems fine. Is it possibly... Is this possibly a trick? Right? Like putting one of these... Every so often, maybe in the gaps between the machines, just to give everything a little bit of a speed boost? What could go wrong? Genuinely, what could go wrong? At this current moment, I am unsure. Oh, it's something to consider, though, isn't it? It's something to consider. I don't know. I really don't know. We've got so many of these watches of flowing time now. There's so many different things we could do with them. Armor! We were going to make armor! We were going to make gem armor! That's right! I haven't forgotten. I haven't forgotten. I promise you. We're going to get right back to that now. Uh, gem armor! <laughs> right! What, 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 do we, what do we need? We needed that. Uh, and we need one for a quest. But to make the helmet, we're also going to need a soul stone and an Evertide... Amulet. So the soul stone, we've made one of these before. Glow stone, as well as lapis. And I've already forgotten. So why don't I just stop talking and we can cut all this out of the video. Okay, so I think I've got everything that I need down here. I've got my full set of red matter armor and then everything else is kind of in a mess. This does mean we're going to get red, I think. I think it's going to consume that. I know that you can use this in recipes and it won't consume it, but I don't think this counts because I think it's actually going to consume the Evertide Amulet and the Vulcanite Amulet. But that's okay because I've got more somewhere, somehow, for some reason. Where is my watch? Give me that back right... Oh, no, actually, yeah, that is going to be used in the recipe. But that's okay. We're going to go ahead and start with these bad boys. We're going to make the gym boots. And we're going to pop them on, and yes, can confirm, flying is normal, can confirm, oh my gosh, we do move very quickly. Is this about as fast as the previous pair of boots we had in the quantum armor? Possibly. It possibly is. What about jumping? Oh! Oh, that's weird. You can just, okay, no, so that wasn't out of date. You can just hold down the space button to zoom up into the sky. I kind of hate it because I just want a normal jump. I don't know if there's any way to change that. Uh, activate gym armor offensive abilities. What, what, what are the offensive abilities? So that's with V, and then hitting G doesn't do anything. I guess I should look up that uh, wiki again, the outdated one. Because it mentioned something about that, didn't it? Offensive abilities? Let's see. So here it calls them the hurricane boots, but let's see. The uh, V, infernal offensive appears. You can be... Okay, pressing G readies the mo movement abilities and allows you to begin to start using them. Passive abilities are always active. So if I enable that and then hit G, does something interesting happen? Pressing G does nothing. You're lying to me. Holding down shift? Eh, it doesn't really matter. You can just toggle... But what is the offensive abilities of this armor? Quickly ascend, move faster on the ground, immunity to all damage, allow, travel significantly faster. It doesn't mention having an offensive ability. It doesn't say anything about it. I think it's a lie. I'm turning this off. It might be other armor sets have offensive abilities. Let's try the gem chest plate so this one is going to give us immunity we're building these in like a real weird order and in fact why don't why don't we just go ahead and make them all let's go ahead and make the helmet i don't care whatever make the make the leggings just get it over with uh, we still have these in here that's good put this stuff on it looks basically the same there's a mod though for uh, granted it's a newer version 
but it uh, changes the the look. So one thing I'm curious about is um. See, I was hoping it would repel them, like how the ring can be used to repel them. Did that kind of do that, maybe? Oh! Or is that just like a torch or something? Look, if I hold down shift, it repels the guy. If I let it go, he gets close. If I hold down shift, though, it pushes him away. See, that's got to be a part of one of these. So let's go up to the top and we'll start with the helmet. So, passive breathe underwater, offensive press R to shoot lightning. Uh, is this off? Deactivated. Uh, activated? I, I'm gonna have to disagree with that. The R does nothing. The G does nothing. The Y, though! The Y does everything! The Y, uh, y, y is the worst possible key to use for that. It's so far out of the way. I'll have to reprogram it. I don't, I don't know why it says it would be on R. Clicking R does nothing. Other than make that weird noise. But okay, that's good to know. Okay, Infernal Armor. Uh, so that's the chest plate. Uh, create an explosion around you with C. <sighs> yeah, can confirm. That one works. That one works real good. That one is... Um... Yep, that one's quite effective. You're going to want to be careful with that one. Don't just hit C anywhere you are. That could... Uh... That that could end. Uh, that could be. That could, mm, that's that's an accident waiting to happen right there. Want to be careful with that one. Then vulnerable to fire and lava. Though that's good to have. Uh, slowly repel approaching mobs within a five block radius while holding shift, and increase the free falling speed when holding shift as well. Okay. Well, if we go high up into the air, then and that's going to be what this is. I'm gonna have to go high up into the air, and uh, then we free fall, and then I hold down shift. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Hi guys. How are y'all doing? My name is Reese. I can now take you off with infinite arrows, and if I feel like it, I can also create a, a massive explosion. I am a weapon of mass destruction. If they found me inside of Iraq, they would invade. Or they would just make up that I was in Iraq and they would invade as well, but that's just biting political commentary. Uh, <laughs> this is bizarro armor. Uh, it seems very dangerous. And I don't, I don't, again, the the one thing I'm concerned about, though, if we just, like, head back over to, uh, to someplace kind of far enough away that no one's going to notice what's happening, and I, and maybe I can, like, I don't want to go over there. I've claimed that territory now, so I don't really want to struck around with it. You know what? I think they used to te test nuclear, like, armaments out in the ocean, right? So if we just fly to right here, this seems as good a spot as any. Oh, yeah, we can, uh, we can breathe underwater as well, so that's good to see. And I just start hitting C, right? Oh, really? Really? Just not underwater? Not underwater. Or above water? Really? What? Am I standing on top of water? Am I, am I flying? What is happening? I think I'm just gliding on top of water for no reason. I'm very confused by that. Yeah, that appears to be what's happening. If I press F5 right now. Yeah, okay. Okay. Apparently we have Jesus abilities now. We can just I mean we're not even technically on the water, but I'm I'm not flying either. If I if I like See, yeah, we just we we're just repelling it for some reason. I have no explanation for this. This is bizarro abilities. Get me out of here. Take me Where's the nearest landmass? <laughs> this is so freaking weird. This seems safe. This seems like well enough out of the way that no one can be mad at me for what I'm about to do. Okay, so we're going to reactivate. Oh. Wait, what? Is it because I'm holding something in my hand? Is that really the ability reason I can't just hit C? That's exactly the reason I can't just hit C. It's because I'm holding something in my hand. Does that mean I could have tested this underground? Or underwater, even? Like, <laughs> If I'm not holding something in my hand, will it let me... You can absolutely, if you're not holding something in your hand. That's good! Because does that mean if I'm walking around with my red guitar and I hit C? Okay, what if I'm, like, holding this? Good. So as long as I keep something in my inventory, I can't accidentally do one of these while I'm just wandering around in the base. The water does seem to have a detrimental impact on the explosive capacity of the explosion. But otherwise, yeah, this is, this is dangerous. This is extremely dangerous. And now I've got to just rebuild my base. 
But, all right. Well, there you go, folks. That's the watch of flowing time being a little bit disappointing with growing plants, but also maybe breaking the assembly line? Possibly? We'll have to test that further. That's the gem armor, and that's me asking you whether or not you think that I should go ahead and give this... I mean, you've seen how powerful the watch of flowing time can be when it comes to breaking assembly lines. Who knows how else it might be used depending on who was using it. It could end up being a weapon of great good. You might even start off using it intending it to be used as great good, but through you it would work the most horrific evils. And what I'm saying is that I'm not really sure if giving this sort of absolute power to anyone other than me is a good idea. Because obviously, this is my YouTube series, so whatever I decide to do with it is going to be a good idea. But I'm not so sure about giving it to Endermen, because aren't they, they... They seem to be kind of aggressive. If you look at them, they just come up and start slapping you, which is just not okay. It's not a normal thing to do just because someone stares at you to just run up and uh, assault them with the intention of killing, which tends to be the normal sort of attitude of Endermen. I, I don't know about giving them a watch of flowing time. I, I don't know what they could do with it that could possibly end poorly, but I mean, they'll find a way, right? So maybe we keep this power to ourselves, or am I just being greedy and thinking about how I can take over the economy? Like, am I being a bit of a Jeff Bezos looking at this and thinking, man, with the watch of flowing time, oh, well, we can have the most efficient warehouses in the country. We can cut staff down by half and then cut their wages by half and then just have them work and they'll get twice as much done in the same amount of time. I'm Jeff Bezos. I'm a bad guy. Is that what I'm doing right now? I'm unsure. I'm quite honestly unsure. Comment down below. Do we do we give him the extra watch of flowing time or do we not? Keep in mind I might record the next episode before you have an opportunity to even comment. <laughs> but I'd love to hear what your thoughts are anyway. In the in the in the in the comment section down below. So if you have a thought, please share. And in the meantime, I'm gonna see where our Mercurial Mercurial eye is. Thank goodness we have one here. And this is going to be the way faster and way more intelligent way of... Oh, I want to hit the right button here. Is it G? No, is it... <laughs> it's, it's G, right? To change the... Uh... Hello? How do you... How, how do you... Hello? Do I need to be on the ground to configure this thing? Like, how do I change the mode? Do I... Hello? It seems to be broken right now, the Mercurial Curial Eye. What happens if I right-click here? It doesn't do anything. Is it broken? Is it entirely broken? Hello? I'm so confused. Is it because of my armor? If I take my armor off? Okay, well, I'll have to figure this out later. Thank you folks for watching. God bless you. And I'll see you later. Goodbye! <laughs>